Hi everybody and welcome to today's tutorial. Um, today we're going to be going through a question involving redox reactions and galvanic cells. So basically what I've done is I've written up an equation and the question is to firstly sketch sketch that particular equation, uh, sketch a galvanic cell setup. Then it's um, show the electron flow, which one's a cathode, the anode, the polarity as well as the salt bridge. Okay, so let us get started. Now, if you're just given the equation on its own, what you need to do is you really need to uh, break it down and see what's happening to the individual components within that reaction. So let's just break it down into lead. Okay, let's just write out lead solid somehow turns into lead ions. Okay, now what that means is basically it's not balanced yet because what you need to do is you need to insert electrons to balance that out. So the way we balance it is because this charge is zero and because this charge is plus two, okay, then it means that we need two electrons to neutralize that. So we need to add two electrons. Okay, so now we know that basically lead, lead is giving off the electrons. So it's producing them. And this is known if electrons are being lost that means that this process is called oxidation. Oxidation is a loss of electrons. Okay, now if you remember from your electrochemical series, basically you would know that it's ordered in how much something wants electrons. Okay, so there's a huge list of different components and they're all like the things at the top want electrons most, the things at the very bottom don't want electrons at all and would be happy to give them away. So as you can see, lead is giving away its electrons. So that means that lead must be lower on the electrochemical series than for instance cobalt. Because cobalt is actually, we know from lead, if lead is making them, if lead is producing those electrons, then since that is a redox reaction, cobalt must be accepting electrons. Okay? So, uh, cobalt is accepting the two electrons produced here. So what we'll find is when we set up, so we know that lead Here's cobalt, you know, cobalt 3 plus, and then we have lead. So this is electrochemical series order. Okay, so let's draw a galvanic cell. Here we have. Now, one of these one of these electrodes is just going to be lead because as you can see lead is in the solid form and the other electrode is going to be interesting because this is in aqueous and this is in aqueous and because both of them are in aqueous then you can't have you know cobalt metal what we have instead is either platinum something inert, something that doesn't react. Some, we need something that is inert and can um, basically have electrons passing through it. Okay? We can have uh, platinum or we can have carbon. So that's only, we only choose these when all of it is in aqueous in a particular um, half cell. So then we have of course got our electrolyte solution and then we have a salt bridge. Okay? And if you remember, we also need to have an external circuit with, you know, it can be a light bulb or anything there. Okay? And as you can see, we've so far set up a little bit here. Um, what we need to do is we need to show the electron flow. Now, we already saw that electrons are going to be created by your lead. Okay, because I showed you an equation that had a lead solid breaking down into lead ions and two electrons. So that means that the electrons are moving away from lead, moving that way. That's the electron flow. Okay, so because lead is producing them, so that's the direction. And it's going to this half cell. Okay, so this half cell, for the electrons to actually be motivated to get there, it has to be positive. Okay, and this half cell here, because you don't want electrons there, that will be negative. Okay, so, so far we, can't, we have 
shown the electron flow. We need to identify the cathode and the anode. So let's do that now. Okay, remembering that negative charge is the anode, just by definition, and positive charge is the cathode. Okay, so there we go, we've done that, we've done that. We've done the polarity, and now all we need to do is the salt bridge. Okay, so what will happen is basically in this half cell, if you just look at this one, we know that this equation is going to happen. I'll, draw, I'll write it out again. Lead is going to break down into lead ions plus two electrons. Okay, so as you can see, um, that particular electrolyte solution will start growing in positivity. So it will create a lot of lead ions. So basically what we'll find is that in this half cell, we, we will have the concentration of our lead it will go up. And so it will also go up because these are increasing. You will go up in positive, positive charge. Okay? In this one here, you'll find that you're going to actually use up the cobalt and produce co cobalt with a plus two charge. So basically, the concentration of cobalt in that half of cell is going to decrease. And so you've actually got a more negative. Because you're decreasing the amount of positivity you have, you're going more negative. Okay? So finally what we can do is we can identify which, if, if your salt bridge is dipped into potassium nitrate, then this ionic combination can actually uh, be separated, okay, into the respective ions. So basically you'll find that potassium will move, because potassium is K+, plus, it will move into the positive, no, sorry, it will move into the negative half cell, so it's going to move there. And because nitrate is negative, and this half cell is increasing in positivity, then it's going to get transferred here, it's going to diffuse there. So that is just a way of balancing the charges and making sure that the system it remains neutral. So that the half cell electrolyte isn't charged and so that the electrons can actually go through the external wire and not just sit there interacting with the electrolyte solution. Okay, so that's it for today and next tutorial we'll be going through, I guess, more questions. And yeah, so have a great day and I hope to see you later. Bye.